Let's start you back with something that's not overly difficult. You see a pattern there in front of you, and I want to know what comes next. And yes, we have done this before. In this video, you're going to be describing the graph of a linear function in terms of an initial value and a rate of change. And the thing you have to understand about this video is that I'm not setting you up for learning how to do any particular type of calculation, but rather this video is just to help you understand what a linear function is. The purpose is to install knowledge into your head, not to practice any mathematical technique, which means your focus needs to be on its A game for this video. So a linear function describes a relationship in which one variable changes at a constant rate compared to the other variable. And by the way, if you completely understand a linear function from that definition, bravo, as a student, you have a bright future ahead of you. Uh, for the rest of us, we need to break that definition down into its component parts, analyze it a little bit, see what's going on, and maybe come up with some alternate ways of understanding this. But to tackle the definition head on, let's look at this. Suppose you're at a basketball game, and you walk in, and there's been one shot happen, and the team has three points. So they made a three-pointer right off the bat. And then... Every shot after that, they just did two pointers. They didn't shoot another three. So after two shots have gone in, they now have five points. After three shots have gone in, they have seven. After four shots have gone in, they have nine. Now, if you are a very astute observer, you've probably realized where these numbers are coming from. It's that pattern that you saw earlier. And I'm hopeful that all of you looked at that pattern and said, well, of course I know what's coming next. 11 comes next. And indeed it does. After five shots, they will have 11 points. This is all we mean by a linear function. I have two variables. I have the score and the number of shots that have gone in. And the relationship between them, or they are changing at a constant rate compared to the other one. So for example, Every time the number of shots increases by 1, the score increases by 2. And that pattern holds no matter which ones I look at. Uh, the score is always increasing by twice the number of shots. So for instance, if I go from 3 to 5, I added 2 right there. And from 7 to 11, I added 4. So the ratio of those is always constant. There's a constant rate of change. Each time one variable changes, the other changes by a corresponding amount called the rate of change. So if we're going to look at this in other ways, another good way of thinking about a linear function is that you're starting at some number and skip counting. Uh, so for instance, we'll look at the score. We're starting at 3. And then we're skip counting by 2 to 5, 7, 9, 11, forever. And this actually meets the same uh, <clears throat> meaning as our previous definition, uh, where we talked about the relationship between variables and increasing at a constant rate. That's really just a fancy way of saying we're starting at some number and then skip counting by another number. And we'll come back and we'll look at what those two values are because they're very, very important. But that's one way we can think of this. And another way we can think of a linear function is it is anything where the graph of the function is a straight line. So for example, if I graph these points, 1, 3, 2, 5, 3, 7, 4, 9, and 5, 11, I can very plainly see that if I were to connect those, they make a straight line. And so when you graph a linear function, you always get a straight line. And in fact, that's where they get their name. Now, one thing I want to point out as an aside that if you remember this, great. If not, it is not the end of the world, is that when I say linear function, I really mean a linear polynomial function. When you get into much higher mathematics, upper level college mathematics, linear function will have a slightly different definition than what we're talking about here. Um, we're talking about a special type of polynomial, which is something we'll study a little bit later, uh, which is linear. That is, there's no exponent 
on our variable. And so if I define it that way, a linear polynomial function, I can say it's always going to be a straight line, and I'm in keeping with that definition of linear function for later. Uh, food for thought, if you never think about that again in your entire life, it's probably okay. So we have our relationship between two variables where they're increasing at a constant rate based off of one another. We can say we're starting at some number and skip counting by another number. Or we can say it's a function when you graph it, you get a straight line. All of those are equivalent definitions of a linear function. And so what we're going to do now is look at some examples and see what we can see. So the most common example I can think of of a real-life linear function is hourly pay. Hopefully you'll all have jobs one day. One of the options for how you get paid is to be what's called an hourly employee. That is, for every hour you work, you make a certain amount of money. And we can think about this pretty straightforwardly. If you don't work any hours, you don't make any pay. It's as simple as that. Uh, however, we can now talk about if you work so many hours, how much pay do you make? And we're going to use minimum wage here because when most people start out, you don't usually start out with a really well-paying job. Minimum wage jobs are for entry-level workers. Like that's where you start out and then you work your way up from that. And minimum wage is $7.25, so for every one hour you work, you get another $7.25. So if I look at this, I can say there's 1 and 7.25, and then there's 2 and 14.5. And so it's a relationship between these two variables, how much pay I'm making and the number of hours I work. When I graph them, it's a straight line. It's like skip counting starting at zero and skip counting by 7.25 each time. This is a linear function. Now there's two important parts I want to point out on this. The first is that number we start with. If I use that skip counting definition, I say we started somewhere and skip counted by so many. Well, that number that we start with is called the initial value or the y-intercept. Both of those mean the exact same thing. There is zero difference between them. The initial value of the y-intercept is where we start from. And if you're looking at the graph, the y-intercept is the place on the graph, the y-value on the graph, where the graph crosses the x-axis. So in this case, it crosses at zero. If you're looking at a table, the y-intercept is the y-value that is across from zero in the table. And so that's like our starting value, where we start with our skip counting. And again, that's called the initial value or the y-intercept. Every single linear function will have one of these. We can also talk about the number we're skip counting by, which is called the rate of change or slope. And just like initial value and y-intercept, where it had two names that mean the same thing, rate of change and slope mean exactly the same thing. There's no difference between them. If we're going to find the slope on the graph, what we do is we take two points and we divide the change in y by the change in x. So here the change in y was 7.25, the change in x was 1, divide 7.25 by 1, and boom, I get my slope. More on that later, you don't have to understand all that right now. Uh, but to find the slope, just take two points and divide the change in y by the change in x. I can do that over here on my table, too. My change in x was plus 1. My change in y was plus 7.25. Divide 7.25 by 1, and there's my slope. So the rate of change just describes how much you're changing uh, when one variable, or how much the y value is changing when the x uh, variable changes by 1. Also neat is check this out. X is the number of hours. Y is the pay in dollars. And I said to find your slope, you take the Y value divided by the X out value, and notice that comes out to be dollars per hour, which is a pay rate. You get paid so many dollars per hour. This is where that comes from, that pay rate. How many dollars per hour you make is a slope. It's a rate of change of a linear function.
Now we can also look at this with uh, another situation where you get paid some base pay with commission. So here I'm thinking of a car salesman is probably about the easiest way to think of this. And what happens is this in um, a lot of dealerships, a car salesman is paid some bare minimum, no matter what you don't sell any cars, you still make this amount of money. So in this case, that would be $1,160 per month, which is what you would make in a month making minimum wage. But even though they make that no matter what, they get what's called commission. So for every car that they sell, they get a little piece of the profit from that car. Now for the average car sale, the um, salesman is going to make about $550. So that means that for every one car you sell, so when this goes up by one, your pay goes up by 550. And so the more cars you sell, the more money you make. And we can see that if we plot that out, it is a linear function. We're starting at 1,160 and skip counting by 550 uh, to get to the next value. And so there we have our initial value, the 1160 and we have a rate of change plus 550 and it meets all our definitions uh, our definition of how the variables are changing with respect to each other we're skip counting starting here by this much uh, or when I graph it it is a straight line so there's another pay option we can talk about which is another linear function uh, which is if you make salary, that is they pay you the same amount every paycheck period no matter what. And so for example on this you don't work any, you don't make any money because that seems fair. And then every month they pay you $4,000 no matter what. Now just to give you some scale on this, if I go back a little bit. Uh, this car salesman, if he doesn't sell any cars, A, he's going to be fired and B, this is very, very low pay right here to make in a month, 1160 This is a very, very difficult life. Uh, you start getting up here, if you're selling four or five cars a month, you're, you're doing all right. You're going to be just fine. Uh, something like this, uh, this is sort of heart of the middle class kind of thing. So if you're making $4,000 a month, uh, you are pretty solidly in the middle class. Uh, but anyway, that's just an aside to give you some scale on this. Uh, looking at this, we're skip counting by 4,000 starting at zero. When we graph all these points, it makes a straight line. Um, I can look at the change. Every change in one here results in a change of 4,000 over here. So again, a linear function. Now before you go getting the idea that this all revolves around pay, we can also see linear functions in other places as well. And this is kind of neat because it shows the relationship in a different way. So suppose you got $150 that you're going to spend on school clothes. And you go somewhere and you see that shirts are 10 bucks, jeans are 15 bucks. And again, I know we're oversimplifying a lot of stuff, but just roll with me on this. Um, so supposing you have this $150 and you're just going to buy shirts. Well, I can buy 15 shirts and no genes. And so that would be the point 15, 0. So I can talk about doing this right here. I can also buy no shirts and 10 pairs of jeans. And that would be right here. But more likely, we're going to buy some combination of the two. And what you can see is that for every three shirts that I buy, remember shirts cost ten dollars each so if I buy three shirts that's thirty dollars well that's thirty dollars that I now do not have to spend on jeans that's two pair of jeans so that's thirty dollars right there as well so what this means is that for every three shirts that I buy I can buy two fewer pants so I can look at it this way uh, every time my number of shirts, and this is going backwards from what I said there, but you still get the idea. Every time the number of shirts goes down by three, the number of jeans I can buy goes up by two. 
there's a relationship between these and it holds throughout the whole thing. Here, if the number of shirts goes down by three, the number of genes goes up by two. And if I plot these out, there is a relationship there. I'm now skip counting by a fraction if I take this one at a time, but that's okay. We can have fractions as a slope. Uh, that makes the skip counting thing kind of nasty, but uh, we can still see that the relationship between the variables is that every time one goes down by three, the other goes up by two, and that's just an expression of slope. So finally, one more, uh, and then I will let you go on this. But there's also something called a startup cost with a business. If you're going to have a business, you're probably going to have to buy some things on the outset. And that means that you're having to spend money before you ever make money. So suppose you're going to sell cans of soda for a dollar each. You find somebody that's going to sell you those sodas for 50 cents each and you buy five dollars worth. So that means before you sell any sodas, you are five dollars in the hole you have already spent five dollars but now every time you sell one so if I sell one soda how much money I've made goes up by one so if I get one dollar back now I've only spent four dollars total if I get another dollar back I've only spent three and two and one and you can see here when I sell five sodas I'm now back to making zero dollars. This is called the break-even point. So this is the point where I've made my money back from the startup cost, and now every can of soda I sell after that, I'm making money. So if I sell that sixth can of soda, I've now made a dollar on this. If I sell seven, I've now made two dollars, and so on and so forth. So what I want you to see is that these linear functions actually occur in life. We can describe them as being a relationship between two variables where when one increases the other increases at a constant rate or we can describe it as starting at some point and skip counting by some value or we can understand that there are any function that when I graph it I get a straight line.